what he said, <laughs> yeah. Drew. And I knocked him out. Drew. But I, you didn't see it back in the back. Yeah. I did. Boom, like that. Drew, I was there last year. You didn't knock anybody out, but, huh. you know. It, huh. just. Well, you know, but you know, Frank and I, we're like this. We're, we're tight. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, okay, Drew. Uh -huh. uh, if you and Frank are so tight, I, let me ask you a couple questions about him, okay? Sure. Yeah, okay. go ahead. We'll, we'll start with the easy one. Uh -huh. a, little, a little softball yeah. for you here. Okay, uh, how many kids does Frank have, Drew? Fifteen. All right. I, I can't name them all, but he's got 15. Okay, that's not even remotely close. Uh, okay, uh, what community council is Frank the president of? He's the president of the Jamaican Rhythm Council, and that's why he's here. Yeah, you've got your facts from somewhere else. It's not really working. Wikipedia? <laughs> Possibly. I'll tell you, Frank is the president of the Whiteley Community Council here in Muncie. He's serving for his third year now. That's cool. That He's cool. also assistant pastor at the Christ Temple Global Ministries here in Muncie. That's, that's, a, mouthful. A, that's a mouthful. It is. It takes somebody like Frank to, yeah. to be a pastor that's, there. That's how big he is. Yes. Big title, big guy. Yeah. That's yeah. Okay. So uh -huh. we are going to bring him on out. So if you guys will put your hands together for Frank Scott, please. Well, good evening. It's good to be here. Amen? Is everybody excited about the council? The conference? The rhythm? All right, all right. I uh, sat back in the back the first pretty much half of the uh, rhythm uh, conference, and uh, I had my eyes closed. And... Um, it was very hard uh, because what I'm going to talk to you tonight about is seeing this rhythm, broken rhythm, seeing the rhythm. So um, I had these glasses on and I shut my eyes and I tried to listen to a uh, pastor talk. And I'm going to tell you, if you can see, if you have the ability to see, you want to see. You want to see. I sat there and I tried and I tried and I tried to keep my eyes closed and and he would say something, and I'd cheat. I'd sneak a peek. Because I didn't want to just hear it. I wanted to see his expression. I could hear the passion in his voice, and I wanted to see it on his face. So vision is a very, very uh, important thing. And when uh, uh, you're talking about finding uh, the rhythm again, finding that broken rhythm or seeing the rhythm, uh, sight is a, is a very important thing. So I'm going to be really religious here for just a second, and I'm going to read a couple of scriptures because I have a very, very couple of good stories. Well, I didn't know that thing was so heavy. <laughs> Has nothing to do with rhythm, but we learn something every now. I'm going to take these off. I'm going to tell you. Whew. Uh, I have a couple of scriptures I just want to share with you. Um, and the first one is found in uh, the book of John. I'm going to read it in the um, message. It says, walking down the street, Jesus saw a blind man from birth. His disciples asked, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, causing him to be born blind? Jesus said, you're asking the wrong question. You're looking for someone to blame. There's no such effect here. Look instead for what God can do. We need to be energetically at work for the one who sent me here, working while the sun shines or it is day. For night comes and the work is over. For as long as I am in the world, there is plenty of light, for I am the world's light. And he said, and he said this, and sped on the dust, made clay paste with the saliva, rubbed the paste on the man's eyes and said, go wash in the pool of Salaam. The man went and washed and he saw. Soon the town was buzzing, his relatives and all those who knew him year after year and saw this blind man begging. They were saying, why, isn't, isn't, that, the, isn't that the one who was sitting there begging? Others said, oh, yeah, I think that's him. Others objected and said, no, no, it's not the same man at all. It, it just looks like him. And he said, it is I. 
the very one. Then Mark chapter 8 says, um, as Jesus was coming out of the city of Bethesda, he took the blind man by his hand and led him out of the village. He spit on the man's eyes and placed his hands on him and said, can you see anything? And the man looked up and said, I can see the people, but they look like trees walking around. Once again, Jesus placed his hands on the man's eyes, and when he opened them, his sight was restored, and he could see everything clearly. Amen. Amen. Father, we just ask that you let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in in your sight. Amen. Amen. When I read these two scriptures, I thought, we are a lot like one of these two men. The first man was born into darkness. Of course, all of us was like the first man. Born into darkness, having no reference, no no perception of light at all. Born blind, not knowing what it was to, to actually be able to see. The other man... He was uh, one who had been given the gift of light, given the gift of sight, but something happened. And, and, and somewhere down the, loss, the, down the line, he lost his ability to see. He lost his vision. You might say his rhythm was broken. And we know this because it says that when Jesus uh, prayed for him the first time, he said, I can see men walking around, but they look like trees. So this let us know that he at least knew what a man looked like and a tree looked like, and it said his sight was restored. The other inter- interesting thing about this was when, when uh, the, the blind man uh, who was born blind, when he got his sight, not only did his ability to see changed, how others saw him changed. He had been blind since birth, grew up blind, and there were people that knew him and said, is, is, is that him? That doesn't, what, is that the one that was begging? It not only changed his ability to see, but how people saw him. No, that, that, that can't be him. It changes how we look. I'm going to tell you, it, it, it changes, you see me, you know, it, and you see me, It changes the way we look to other people. There's something about us that is different when we receive our sight, not only to us, but also to others. The thing else, the the other thing I thought of, it's, it's important that you want to see. You have to want to see. If you ever had vision and you lose it, you really need to want to see again. I could have gotten so comfortable back there with my eyes closed and adjusted to the darkness. Some people have been, uh, who have had vision, they've been in darkness so long, they've they've adjusted to the darkness and they've they've managed to negotiate their way through darkness and they feel their way through darkness rather than deciding to walk in the light. And and a lot of people have gotten comfortable in their blindness. So the first thing is you got to admit, I can't see. And then you have to want to see. Everybody doesn't want to be healed. Everybody doesn't want to see. That's why Jesus, when he went to the pool of the, he, he, said, he said to the man, wilt thou be made whole? He didn't say, do you think I can heal you? Do you believe that I have the power to heal? He didn't ask him that at all. He said, do you want to be made whole? Because with wholeness comes responsibility. See, a lot of people like that handicapped parking space. They like that little sign hanging in their window. They like to drive in the cart rather than having to push one around the grocery store. They get comfortable with that, and they they like being able to use that excuse and that crutch. They like the little cup. But he said, if you want to be whole, that means you're going to have to put down the cup and pick up a job. You're going to be responsible and accountable. Do you want to be made whole? And the question tonight is, do you want to see the rhythm? Do you want to see the rhythm of God? Do you want to get back in that rhythm? What does that rhythm look like? What does does it, I thought about the rhythm and I thought about timing. And everything is is about timing. In Ecclesiastic it says, for everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under the heaven. Everything is about timing, how fast we move. Which way we go, 
When do we rest? That's kind of like music. They were playing music. They got to know how fast is the beat. When do we move here? It's all about being in sync. It's all about being in tune. It's all about being in the flow, in the rhythm. When do we rest? We've got to know, we've got to know when we want to rest in God, when we want to move in God. And, and, and in, order, in order to do that, we've got to be willing to give up some stuff. One of them is ourselves. Like you're just, somebody preached a good message. Knock yourself out. Uh, I don't know. If, I heard about that. Man, that's such a, you got to be willing to do that in order to be able to see because we've got to get out of, out of the way of our own self. I saw something on Facebook. I got to keep, I got to go, uh, uh, keep going. But this, this guy was on Facebook and he was in a mirror and he was drunk and he was in, in a mirror at a grocery store and he had a carton of eggs and he was trying to go forward. But every time he tried to he, he kept getting in his way. And he would talk to himself, and the guy was back there videoing the whole thing, and he was drunk, and he, was, and he started fussing with himself because he wouldn't get out of his own way. And that's how we are a lot of times. We won't get out of our own way. I thought about this, this, this vision, and, I mean, this rhythm, and what it, what it looked like. What, what does the rhythm of God look like? And uh, then I thought about what does God look like? Because if we could see, see him, then I think we could see the, the rhythm. You, Pastor, was talking about Adam uh, in the Garden of Eden, and uh, it's amazing. Um, we are created in his image and after his likeness. We are more like God than anything he created. And when he created Adam, it says he brought the animals to Adam to see what he would call them. This call in the Greek, it means what he would proclaim that it was, what he would say that it was. And it says that whatever he called them was the name. Name is a designation of God. So whatever Adam called the thing was the name or the designated thing that God gave it. God didn't bring the animals to Adam to see what they were. Adam, I'm bringing this to you. Man, what in the world is it? What, what is this thing? What, what is this? He brought it to Adam to see if he would call it what he named it. And the rhythm and, 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 and of God and Adam was so in sync until whatever Adam said it was, was a thing that God had named it. How many of us are going around not knowing our own name? Being called something else but not knowing who we are. Operating outside of our identity because we've gotten out of that rhythm and somebody has called us this and, and, and we're really designated to be this. When you get into the rhythm of God, you will be able to see who you are in God. It doesn't change. I, I, I got a hammer at home. I got a hammer. And I can take that hammer and stir up a a pitcher of Kool-Aid with that hammer. I mean, clean hammer, you know. I can stir a pitcher of Kool-Aid up with the hammer, but it doesn't change what the hammer is. It doesn't change what it is. These men had names. Blind man from Bethesda. Blind man who was born blind. They had names, but they were identified or they were known by their issues. There was a woman who had an issue of blood. What was her name? Who, what was her identity? A lot of us are known by our name, by our, uh, by our issues. Our issues might describe us, but they don't define us. Whatever God says we are, that's what we are. And we have to, have the, we have to be in the rhythm of God. We have to have that flow in order to know what that is. And if you don't know what you are, somebody will convince you that, uh, that you're something that you're not. And a lot of people, rather than trying to find the rhythm of God, they get into the rhythm of other people. And rather than flowing in the rhythm of God and being like him, they get into somebody else's rhythm and they started being like other people. That's why you see so many uh, imitations of folk. And how many of y'all have seen Michael Jackson? How many Michael Jackson's people are still wearing Elvis Presley wigs? Because they're trying to be something else other than what God has created. It's that broken rhythm. We are to, I've got two children. I've got two children. 
<laughs> I have a lot of folk that call me dad. I have two begotten. Two begotten. Camille Roche Scott, now Jones, and Frank Thomas Scott II. <laughs> I have two children. When those two children were born, they were the cutest babies in the world to me. I got pictures. <laughs> they were the cutest babies in the world to me, but that wasn't enough. That wasn't enough. Because what I wanted to see was I wanted to see the me in them. I started looking for the, as cute as they were, I wanted to see the me in them. So I started looking at their fingers and toes and lips and nose and hair and everywhere, trying to find the me in them. And that is what God wants. He wants to find the him in us. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father that it sufficeth us. If we can see him, we'll be satisfied. All we want to do is see the Father. If we can see the Father, we won't ask you for anything else. That'll be it. Just let us see him. Hey, we're good to go. That's it. We're done. How many has ever heard your children say, if you just give me this, I won't ask you for anything else. If you just let me have this. And they don't even know what they're going to want that night. <laughs> the disciples didn't even know what they're going to face the next day. But if you let us see the Father, it will suffice at us. It will satisfy us. He said, when you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Don't you understand that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The very words that I speak, I don't speak of myself. It's not my own authority. I only say what he says to say. I only do what he says to do. This is how we get into the rhythm of God. Only saying what he wants to say. Only doing what he wants us to do. Having him to see himself in us and us see him in. My kids want to somebody say, you know what? When, when, when you do that, Camille, when you, you just like your daddy. That does something for her. She wants people to see the me in her. That, that, uh, that in, 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 uh, reinforces the fact that I am her father. My son, I can say I got a little crooked finger here. They call them bow fingers. Like they bow leg, but they fingers. And my son is, is, is so proud of that little crooked. I got, see, I got a crooked finger like my dad. I got that, I got that from, my, from my dad. Look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. Can you, can you see him now? Can you see him now? We are more like God than, than anything he created. And when, when, God, uh, when people ask to see God, I want to see the rhythm of God, they ought to be able to look at us and see the rhythm. They ought to be able to look at us and there's enough of him in us and enough of of, of him leading and guiding and our walking in him until, wait a minute, S Sam, is that, Sa is that, 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 no, that's not Sam, that's, is that Sam, is that, is that him? And Sam says, yes, yeah, me, I'm the very one. But I once was lost, now I'm found, I was blind, but now I see. And not only do I see, but you see me differently because I've gotten into the rhythm of God. The closer you get to a thing, the better you'll see it. Sometimes we've, we, we, we've gotten so far away from God until we can't see the rhythm. We can't see him very clearly. I thought about Peter and the disciples when they were on the boat and Jesus came to them walking on the water. They had been struggling for hours trying to get to a place that he told them to go to. So here he comes walking on the water and it says, when they first saw him, they thought he was a spirit. A ghost. Ooh. They'd already been struggling. Now here comes this, this apparition walking on the water, and they were frightened. But the closer he got, the clearer their vision became. So much so that Peter says, if it's you, bid me. I'd, I'd rather walk out there in the thing that I'm struggling in with you than to stay in this boat. Because you're walking on top of what I'm struggling in. And I see now I'm close enough to you to see that it's you. And I want to walk on the thing that I'm struggling in just like you. 
When we get into the rhythm of God, the things that we struggle with, the things that we're, we're fighting, the things that that, that uh, Pastor was talking about, the, the, the hurt, the, the pain, the, the struggle, all of those things, that water wasn't anything to Peter when he, I'm in the rhythm now, stepped out of the boat and started walking on the water. But in our walk, sometimes we lose our vision. We lose, we lose sight of him and we begin to sink. In those times, all we have to do is fix our eyes back on him. There's a whole lot of stuff going around. Boy, I'll tell you, I watch MSNBC. I'm sorry, I've confessed. <laughs> Just the altar, I'll, we'll all come down after the thing. And I watch MSNBC, I watch Fox News. I watch, you know, it's just like contenders. They're in the ring and they box and they fight. And, 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 and there's so many things that can distract us and cause us to lose rhythm, rhythm, lose sight. And if we're not careful, the vision of God will get so far out here, we'll start again feeling our way in darkness. We'll be start walking by how we feel, what we think, rather than stepping into the rhythm of God. And God wants us to fix our eyes on him. This is a good conference. Every time I've been asked to speak, the message has always been to me first. So I didn't come here to tell you guys, get the rhythm. Come on. Get the beat. Can't you hear it? Can't you get it? I'm here because God is saying you need to get the rhythm back. And I'm here to find out, like Pastor said, different areas in my life where rhythm has been broken. I'm here at this conference to get the rhythm of God back in my life so when people see me, look at, look at your neighbor again. Can you see him now? And throughout this conference, I want you to continue to look at your neighbor until the next time someone say, says, look, can, can you see him now? You can see him. Because we are the only thing God placed in the earth to represent him. Some of us said, show us the Father. And Jesus said, when you see me, you see the Father. I, I, I hate to bust your bubble. He's not coming down in this thing and say, here I'm is. <laughs> That's why he put us here. We are a representation of him in the earth. And when we get the rhythm of God, when we get that rhythm back, when we get that flow back, when they see him, They'll see us. And the works that we do, the words that we speak, they won't be our words. We'll only say what he... And then you can't lose because everything God has done, he's done. Everything God has done, he's done. That's why when Adam named the animals, they already had a name, they already had an identity. But that's why when Jesus said... Um, Pray, uh, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He's not asking us to ask him to do it. He's asking us or he's telling us to make a declaration in the earth. Thy kingdom come, I declare, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We are to execute and establish the will and the government and the purpose of God in the earth. So what he's already done here, it is our job to manifest it here in the earth, to call it out of heaven into existence, manifest in time and in history in the earth. We're the ones that call it down. Anybody need to be healed tonight? Your healing is already done. God is already on the other side of what you're struggling with. See, this is a continuum called time, and we're somewhere in here. God is already here. And everything that he's done here is done. We just haven't stepped into it yet. So what our job is to step into what God has already done. And when we get the rhythm of God, we will know what that is. That's why every time Jesus said something, it happened. Because he knew what was. You want to be 100% get in the rhythm. That's why when we pray for we say, Lord, uh, heal him if it, be your, if it be your will. See, that's, that's, that's our disclaimer. Peter said, look, silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, I give I unto thee. Father, no. 
in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. That's our job in the earth, to get in that rhythm so that we can execute his will. It is, Father, will you heal? Will you? That's not even the language of the kingdom. We've got the language of the kingdom is, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Rise up and walk. Be healed. Be whole. Be delivered. The rhythm of God, that's where we walk in that power and that authority to execute his will in the earth. And that is why I'm here tonight, because I want to see it. And I'm seeing it more and more. Look at the person next to you. Can you can you see him now? Go home tonight. Go home tonight and look in the mirror. Can you can you see him now? You'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. When, you, when you're walking in that flow, you'd be at a grocery store and you'd be saying, you know, I really, really feel like I would have, but I don't know. Jesus didn't walk in doubt. He didn't say, okay, everybody raise your hands. No, he just walked by. He, Peter's shadow healed people. Jesus went to the, uh, we went to the pool, of, but then he walked by all these people. Wasn't their time yet. I'm going to this one because I can't fail if I do what he's done. And what he's done is this man. So this is why I'm going to this man. Why are you going to him? Because that's where the father, I'm, I'm in the rhythm. Well, why would you pass by him? Not his time yet. See, if it was, we could just go to ball hospital, just turn everybody out. Okay, ball, I'm here. <laughs> Going to be a whole lot of empty beds because I'm here to just clear the house. Got the power of God and I'm here to clear the house. And you will walk out disappointed. Yeah. Because for everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose. And getting in the rhythm of God will help us understand when that time is, who that person is. I see your pain. Why am I drawn to you? The Father. I'm in the rhythm. What do I say? What he says. How do I know? I'm in his rhythm. I'm in his flow. I got my vision back. I got my vision back. I can see now. Sight is so good. I'm telling you, you have got to want to see. And sight is easy. He just said, you see now? This conference, he's going to open our eyes and give us the ability to see. Now, I have the ability to see. But I can't. There's something we have to do. Take up your bed and walk. He had a decision. He could have stayed there and sat there. Once God comes through this conference, you're going to be given the ability to see. He's not having this conference for nothing. He's not doing this for nothing. His word accomplishes the thing that it's sent to do. The question is, how are we going to respond to this word. This word is coming this week to give us sight. So give us sight, it shall. But will we open our eyes? Will we be the ones that say, yes, I'm back there. I wanted to see Sam so bad. Yes, yes, yes. I have the ability to see now, but I choose to keep. Some people don't want to walk to his rhythm because they like the beat of their own drum. I kind of like my beat. And it'll get you somewhere in this life, but how far off are we from the kingdom purpose and plan of God, which is why we're here, to establish and to accomplish his will in the earth. He said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, have dominion. This is our purpose in the earth, and it hasn't changed since Adam. We don't want got the cell phones and Netflix and all these other things that's taking our attention, but his purpose for man, be fruitful multiply, replenish, subdue, have dominion. Well, the United States is in a mess. That's why we're here. Have dominion in the earth. And if we get the rhythm of God, in three and a half years, turn that whole world upside down. Twelve men. How many in here? I can get to twelve before I get to the fourth, fourth pew. If he could do it with twelve, what can we do in this, in this assembly if we get the rhythm? If we say we want to see. I once was blind, born into blindness, but now I see. I saw, 
but I lost my vision somewhere. Something happened, distracted, and the thing that I saw, I, I, I couldn't see. I couldn't see what I saw. I know men, I know what men look like. I know what trees look like, but I can't see them. Some of us know, but we haven't been able to see. This conference is going to open our eyes and give us the ability to see again and get in that rhythm of God. Amen? Amen. God bless you.